amazing this morning. Oh, we got to go. Good morning. What's that? We're live. Good morning. Good morning. Three people. Good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah. Come on up, love. Come on up. So good to see you all. Welcome to New Wine Ministries. We're back from Santa Rosa, Florida. We, you see what we brought you, don't you? We brought you some sunshine. So we're hoping that uh, it sticks around long enough. Yes. Good to be with you, church. God bless you. I was so excited just to see everybody. Yes. So kind of catching up. It's like we've been gone for like two weeks. I know. A little bit too long. Family is good. Family is good. <laughs> What's that? A little bit too long? Yeah. A little bit too long. Amen. Look over to your neighbor and say, you look absolutely beautiful the way God made you. You look absolutely beautiful. You look gorgeous. Tell them God is on the move. Beautiful. Beautiful. Handsome. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's get ready here. Can we bring up Psalm 23? Bring up Psalm 23. We'll get ready for that. Woo! Hallelujah. Yes. So good to be with he you. He is our shepherd. Hallelujah. Yes. Everybody doing well? Yes. God is so good. Amen. God is Amen. so good. Yes. Let's go ahead and let's open up with a word of prayer. Yes. Father, we love you. Let's go ahead and lift our hands. Thank here, you. give me your hand, love. Okay. Let's lift our hands yes. and invite the Lord. Say, God, we invite you. Father, we thank you for your holy presence, and God, we thank you that you would meet us. Father, we thank you that you are raising up in this hour a ready people, hungry and ready to pursue after you, to run after you. God, we thank you. And so, Father, we invite you, Lord God, into the very midst of this house, that, Lord God, that you may be seated in our praises and in our worship. And God, we bless you. Father, we are a hungry people. And Father, we hunger and thirst after you. And so, Father, that you would have your way in our midst. And Father, we give you all the glory and all the honor. Father, we come with great expectation to experience you, Father, to experience that which you are releasing in this hour. Father, that which you are releasing in this nation. Father, even all over the world right now. And so, Father, we bless your holy name. And we all said, Amen, amen and Amen and Amen. Give the Lord a big hand, church. Come on up. Come on up. Psalm 23. We're going to continue with Psalm 23. Are you ready? All right. Let's do it. Outdoor voices. Oh, is that on, baby? It's not on, Charles. All right. One more time. One more time. Here we go. Outdoor voices. Yes. All right. Here we go, Lily. Go for it. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before my enemies of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hallelujah!
and groaning yeah. is a new creation coming yeah. is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst yeah. it is is it good that we remind ourselves of this it is. Come on. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave, he is David's root. Slaves. Is he worthy? Is he worthy of all blessing and honor and glory? Is he worthy of this? Yeah. Does the Spirit move among us? He does. Yeah. And does Jesus, our Messiah, hold forever those He loves? He does. Does our God intend to dwell again with us? He does. Come on, sing it with me. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave, he is David's root and the Lamb of God to ransom the slave from every people and tribe.
Is he worthy? Is he worthy of all blessing and honor and glory? Is he worthy of it? What do you say? Come on, come on. He is. Can you imagine the sound that's going on in heaven right now? When you've got the angels of heaven that are rejoicing and you've got the saints that's gone on before us that are rejoicing and then you've got the people on earth who know him that's rejoicing is he worthy Stir up the praise for him. Stir up the praise for him. Yes. 
to the feet of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. Everything to the feet of Jesus. Because this is a house of miracles. This is a house of miracles. The word says that the same power, the same power, the same power that rose Christ from the dead, so dwelleth in you. So dwelleth in you. Thank you for your resurrection power, Jesus. Thank you for your resurrection power. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for your blood, Jesus. Thank you. Come on, stir up faith this morning. Stir up faith this morning. God, you're so good. You're so good. You're so good. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Hallelujah, church. Let's come to the altar. Just want to uh, go ahead and give the Lord a big hand. Uh, I'm going to ask my daughter to the worship team to sing the first song that you sang. <clears throat> There's just something powerful at different times. Uh, of services when God begins to meet with his people. And at different times, there's even a, a tone in the sound of the worship that, that is, it, just, it just takes you right in. There's a tone. And so I just want us to reach in. Because number one, that as we approach God by faith, because our lifestyles are of faith, Amen. Number two, that as we step in, we know that not only this house, but God's house is a house of miracles. And so we know that as we approach him by faith, amen, I want you to think about the woman that 
went and pursued Jesus when she had the issue of blood. I want you to think about that because Jesus, he, he, he didn't, I'm sure he knew what was going to happen that day. But at that moment, he turned around as if he was so surprised because he said, someone touched me. And he didn't know exactly who. Was he, was he God? Yes, of course he was God. But the whole point of that was that by faith, she went and pursued the presence of God. And because she pursued by faith, God answered. There was virtue. There was power that came out from his being. Amen? There was nothing about the garment. Listen to me. It was his very being that came forth, the very power of God. Because her, her faith went after him. Amen? So I just want you to see your faith pursuing the presence of God. You just want to touch God. You just want to experience God. So as they sing, let's just press in to the very essence of who God is. And just in that very pressing, in that very entering, miracles are going to begin to happen. So let's go ahead and let's just begin to lift up praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we give you glory and honor. Go ahead. Come on. Come on.
voices now to him. Yes, oh God, you are King of Kings. You are Almighty God. You reign. God, we bless your people in your very presence, oh God. For you are the God, the God of miracles. You gotta break through. You gotta break through. Yes. We give you glory and honor and praise. Holy One of Israel, these are your people that hunger and thirst. They run after you, O oh God. Oh. Father, we bless you. Those of you in need of a miracle, I just want you to make your way up just a little bit closer. Those of you, just let, just kind of part the ways for them a little bit. Just allow them to come on up, up to the front so that we can bless them in worship. Hallelujah, we're in expectation of miracles. We could go ahead and shift that. Yes, God. Hallelujah. We will stand in belief upon the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Brahma Laba Sebrindera Liba. So, honey, I want you to come behind them. I want you to just begin to touch. Hallelujah. Brahma Laba Sembre Seleba Se. Hallelujah. Cecilia, Gussie, come on up here. I just want you to touch their backs as they're up here. We're believing God. He is a supernatural God. We serve the God of miracles. Hallelujah. We are in great expectation, God. This is a house of worship. This is a place Hallelujah. of praise. Mighty God. Where every demon trembles. Those of you that are behind them, just go ahead and lift your hands. Where we right to them. Your name. Yes, God. This is the Hallelujah. Jesus. Our hearts are full yes, God. of faith. Yes, God. Bones come alive. Muscles you come alive, blood come alive. Come into alignment in the name of Jesus. Father, we speak you life and not death. Bones come alive faith. in Jesus' mighty name. We Father, strength to endure, strength to press. Jesus, come Diane, come on, put your hand right here. Right here. Put your hand right here. We bring yes, God. everything to the feet Hallelujah. of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. Father, your word says that we have access to every spiritual blessing. And so, God, we make a withdrawal right now in the name of Jesus. And, Father, we draw upon your spiritual blessings even now, Father, upon these bones and these muscles. Father, we declare the strength of the kingdom, the strength of the living God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Put your hand right there. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Yes, God. The divine strength. Your divine strength. Come alive in the name, in the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. This is a house of miracles. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the yes, name God. of Jesus. This is
Jesus. Father, we believe in the power of your word. And Father, you see your hungry people. And Father, the need. You see every need. And Father, you are the God that meets our needs. Hallelujah. Jesus, you have something? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want everybody to pay attention. This morning, earlier, when we were doing praise and worship practice, and it was over, and we were giving thanks to the Lord for today's service. The Lord gave me a vision, and I saw in that vision. And you remember the man who was lame and crippled, and he laid at the pool. And the angel of the Lord would come and trouble the waters. But before he could get to the pool, somebody else stepped in. My thoughts immediately went to the place. If that had been me, I'd have rolled myself to the edge of that pool. And I would have been ready the minute I saw that water begin to move. I'd have been the first one. I'd have jumped in. I'd have rolled in. I'd have whatever I had to do, I'd have got in there. Because in there was the provision for that man's healing. And this morning, the waters are troubled. This morning, if you have a need within you, whether it's physical, whether it's emotional, whether it is spiritual, whatever, and you're ready to receive from God this morning, you don't need another man to lay their hands upon you. But we will do that. But if you're ready this morning to receive from God... Because you believe he made all provision. He made all things for all of us who believe in him. How many believes in him? Yes, God. How many knows that without faith it's impossible to please God? But how many knows this room is full of faith this morning? Hallelujah. Do you remember the man who had been let down through the roof? Yes. He couldn't get to Jesus because there was a crowd of people. But his friends carried him to the top of the house, broke through another man's house, broke through the roof, and lowered him down with ropes right in front of the master, right in front of the place of provision. This morning, Hallelujah. 
let yourself down in the presence of the Lord and get what you have need of this morning. How many has a need? How many knows that God's not run out of miracles? Yes. How many knows all it takes is faith? Hallelujah. Got a testimony here. Go ahead, Charles. Go ahead and share that. In 2012, I was diagnosed blood work with rheumatoid arthritis, which is very damaging to your body, your bones. I have, for the past year, been going in, taking blood work. And every time I've gone in now, finally he's done the final blood work, and he says, you do not have rheumatoid arthritis anymore. So I tell you, just stay faithful. Stay faithful. There's no such thing that he cannot heal. There's nothing he cannot do. Yes, hallelujah. So I am free, free from rheumatoid arthritis. Hallelujah. Go ahead and lift your hands to the Lord. You serve the King of Kings. And Father, you see the faith in this house, the ever increasing faith. And so, Father, your blessing, the blessing of the new covenant, Father, we just rest upon this house, upon this people. That, Father, that even as they go today, that, Father, that you would do a miraculous touch inside of their body. Father, that they would come and testify, Father, of your goodness. Father, testify, Lord God, of the goodness of your new covenant. And, Father, I bind up in the name of Jesus, doubt. Father, I bind up doubt in the name of Jesus. That it would not hinder. I would even bind up just familiarity. I just hear that in my spirit. I bind that up in the name of Jesus. That, Lord God, that we would experience, Lord God, that which you have said we can experience. And so, Father, we declare life, life, life. Now, go ahead and breathe that in for just a moment. Just go ahead and breathe in. Breathe it in through your nose and out your mouth. Release. Release, release, release. Father, we bless your people. And Father, we will have those that will come and they will testify of your goodness in the mighty name of Jesus. And we all said, amen and amen and amen. Father, we love you. Give the Lord a big hand, church. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at someone by you and say, thank God for the Holy Ghost. (laughs) He's not done. He's not done. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This morning, during prayer, when we were, we had pre-service prayer, I was sitting over here, and you all that know me know I'm not normally a person that sees a lot of visions, but I did this morning. And I looked, and I saw into the heavens, and I saw Jesus, and he was standing. And he was apprehending a heart. 
And I said, Lord, the word says that you are seated at the right hand of the Father. And he said, I'm standing to apprehend the heart. And I said, Lord, there's so many that you have in the earth. There's so many that you don't have in the earth. And he said, I'm apprehending the part of my body. I'm apprehending the heart of my body. And I was reminded of the scripture where a great multitude had gathered on a hill. And we know it as the Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus began to share the Beatitudes. And the one that he brought to me was, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. That word righteousness in the Greek means the condition that is acceptable to God. The way that a man may attain a state approved of God. I don't care what you do in all of your works. Works are important. Faith without works are dead. But there's nothing that we can do to earn the righteousness of God except for humble ourselves in the presence of a mighty God. Humble ourselves in the presence of a mighty God. Because this is an hour that God is about hearts on fire. He has come to light up hearts. I've been following this revival and it's way beyond Asbury. But it's interesting to me that God began it in a place that had spiritually got off track. Began. Now, it reminds me of the scripture in Galatians. Have you begun in the spirit to now end up in the flesh? And it was a school that was established in the beginning. I think his name was William Asbury. And, and he established it with the word of the Lord. The record of him says he wasn't even a very good speaker. But he had words that caught people's attention. And there was a move of God that began in the Methodist movement. But over the last few years, there's been a going in a, a side. And there's been an apprehending of the culture of this world and this woke thing. But it's no surprise that in the midst of that kind of time, God starts working in that place. And then what do they do? They're found on their knees, repenting, repentance, repentance. And not only, there's something else. It's a generation. God's looking for the hearts of a generation. He's apprehending the hearts of a generation. I may be a generation gone, past, gone by, but I'm in this generation to affect this generation for his kingdom. To affect his, this generation for what God is doing. So all of you older ones like me, get on board with what God is doing. Don't be a spectator. Be a participator. Be a participator with what God is doing, with what God is saying. And you will see that the generation that is, that is now on the scene will be affected as we mentor, as we disciple about what he's doing. Not about what I've learned, not about what I, my ideas and my doctrines. Because the Holy Ghost has settled down in the earth. In the earth, 
the Philippines. It, there's thousands of people on the beach in the Philippines, and they've got, they've got uh, baptizers lined up along the shoreline, and the people are coming in, and they're being baptized. Uganda has been hit with the revival, with the awakening of God. Now the high schools are getting hit. It's not just colleges, it's high schools. And, and the middle schools are getting hit. I'm telling you what, our God is on the move. Hallelujah. Can I tell you, if that don't set you on fire, your wood's wet. Your wood's wet. <laughs> I love what God is doing. Don't you love what God is doing? Are you ready to give in to the work of the ministry and to what God is doing? God is doing a mighty, not a revival, an awakening, an awakening in the earth. And God is doing, has been doing an awakening in us in this house. Have you noticed that every single service, there's new people that's coming? That's not about number and doctrine. It's about the drawing of the Holy Spirit. It's about him because he is drawing hearts. And so when there's people that are hungry for God, that are looking for that something with God, God's going to draw them wherever he's moving all across the earth. Amen. And so, Lord, we lift our faith before you this morning. We lift our offerings and our tithes and our seeds that we plant and the things that we have dedicated. Father, we lift it before you today and we give you great thanks. Great thanks with all of our might. We give you great thanks and we give you our heart. Apprehend our heart, oh God. And do that work. You're the carpenter. You're the great physician. You're the King of kings and Lord of lords. Do the work on the hearts of your body in this hour. Bless your people now as we give. In Jesus' name. The ushers are going to serve the house, and we have a video for those of you that would like to give online. Sorry about that. I, I, was, I was too busy teasing the kid with a laser. <laughs> good morning, church. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Good. Doing well? God is good. Amen. Let's go ahead and let's stand up and, and do our declaration together. I missed you. I missed you. We missed you. We did bring you back some sunshine. And uh, you're welcome. Hallelujah. Not yet, almost, all right. A poor little guy, I had this little laser and I couldn't resist, like, will he follow it like, like a little cat does, and certainly his eyes were all over the place. <laughs> Amen? Okay, church, here we go. In him I am a partaker of his divine nature, unified in one spirit. In him I am an overcomer, called to occupy, influence, and transform culture. In him I have power over unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal sickness and disease. In him I am strong and in good courage. In him I am set over nations and over kingdoms, called to root out and to pull down the strongholds of the enemy. In him I am called to love, build, and to plant. In him I shall overtake and recover all, and every place that my foot will tread he has given unto me. 
In him I am called to arise and shine, to be radiant, for kings will come to the brightness of my rising, and the wealth of the Gentiles shall come to me. And we all said, Amen. Amen. We agree. Father, we bless you. And Father, we thank you. And Father, we thank you for your anointing and your presence in the house. And Father, I thank you that, Lord God, that you would not allow one word to come forth out of these lips that is not of you. And Father, we will continue to lift up the name of your son, Jesus that you may draw all peoples unto him. And so, Father, we bless you. We give you all the glory and all the honor. We all said amen Amen and amen. Amen. You may be seated. God is so good. Hallelujah. It's amazing what's happening in the earth. Look at me, church. It is amazing what's happening in the earth. And uh, you see a lot of mess and a whole lot of chaos happening and then you see the hand of God begin to breathe or the breath of God begin to be released in different areas of of the earth and and of this nation and uh, I want to encourage you we we had talked about this and the Lord had released it uh, from here uh, from different people that that no longer should you say and and just say I, I'm hoping for revival but that revival is in the land, okay? And you have to understand the times that we live in, so there are things that, that are, are happening. There is, we, we also talked about this, that chaos and turmoil will increase, okay? But where sin doth abound, grace abounds much more. Yes, give the Lord a big hand for that. You have to. You have to. Because God's allowing Uh, there to be such a a great manifestation. And so you are seeing people that are hungry, that are running toward the presence of God. Listen to me. Churches without the presence of God become social clubs. Honestly, they become social clubs. And then many times people don't want to leave churches like that because of their social gathering. But what are you in true pursuit of? People or the presence of God? And so we have to ask ourselves that question as to what God is really, what, what, what are we after? What are we running after? What are we pursuing? And, uh, and it's, a, it's a very valid question. There are many times, in fact, I was, I was at work one day, and I worked for uh, Chrysler. I was going through the offices there, and I would uh, just, people would stop me at different times to talk about things of the Lord and, and things that were happening in the church and in the Bible study that we had, and they would be so hungry for that. And I said, well, why don't you just come on, come on by and just experience what God is doing? I'd say, oh, no, I, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. I, I feel like the, the priest would, would get angry or the, my pastor would get angry because we've it's like we're going to a different church or something like that, or we're, you know, learning different doctrine. And I thought, my goodness. Here we thought that bondage was outside of the church. The presence of God is the presence of God. So what are man, what are people genuinely pursuing? Are they pursuing a... a denominational mindset, like, you know, it's, this is the way that it is, this is the way that it, it should always happen, or are they genuinely pursuing the presence of God? You yourself have, have to ask yourself that. You have to ask, what am I pursuing? There are, there are times that people, I've even heard of people that, that have strayed away from God because of the, the falling of a minister. Who were you pursuing? Who were you running after? The same God that he preached, the same God as to why you're supposed to be in church is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And so when people realize who are they really following, who are they really pursuing, it makes all the difference, doesn't it? Because God is going to lead you to a place that his presence is very active. He's going to lead you to a people. I've heard an interesting just a um, statement or phrase, and sometimes people would come here and they would say, 
I think it was, I think it was you, Jenny. I think it was you that said this. I, um, that I, I have found my tribe. And think about that for a moment, because there there are many many people out there that are searching for the genuineness of God, and they search for a people that they can commune with, that understand and have experienced the genuineness of the presence of God. And so what your pursuit is makes all the difference as to what you experience. Amen? And so let me do this before we get started. So um, I just am so thankful. I'm so thankful for the body of Christ. I'm so thankful because any time that this house has had a particular need, the body of Christ has just kind of jumped in there. So we have met 75% of $20,000 already. Okay? God is good. For those of you who don't know, so, so our, our drum set is going from uh, this electronic thing. I know nothing about music, by the way, so I call things up there things. But uh, to, uh, to an acoustic set, along with, uh, of course, uh, uh, we're going to put, uh, uh, we think that sometimes that Joshua has to be in a cage. And uh, <laughs> Victoria thinks that sometimes, too. By the way. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but... <laughs> But there is, so we're going to get a, a wrap for it, but there's also a new board that has to, has to be involved with that uh, because we're working with the sound online and all those different kinds of things. So uh, we have been giving into that. And so I think we just started this, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago or something. And uh, so 75% of it has been met of 20,000. Okay. Amen. Yes. And uh, give the Lord a big hand. Another one. Yes, absolutely. Hallelujah. We have to do that. And so... Um, Yes, um, so we're going to send the baskets around here in just a little bit uh, for, for the remaining amount, and uh, we know that God's going to fill it, amen? So I just wanted to thank all of you for that. Thank you so much for meeting that need, amen? Okay, so let's go ahead and jump back into Psalm 23. Okay, that's where kind of I left off. I'm just going to do a quick recap, and then I'm going to jump into what I believe that the Lord has given me for today in regard to Psalm 23, okay? And so here, uh, it's not just one of those psalms that I'm just trying to do an expository teaching on, but it is a, a, a rhema word for the house, okay, for this region. I know that uh, other prophetic ministers have already uh, released at the beginning of the year, Psalm 23, uh, that it was the word of the Lord for them, okay? Uh, I've had some people come, come up to me and say, uh, hey, uh, they're doing that too. Um, well, glory to God, he speaks, <laughs> he speaks all over the place, doesn't he? And, um, and so think about this. If the Lord is releasing it in such a way, you have to ask yourself why, Right? So the times that we live in are just, for lack of better words, just really squirrely. Amen? And so uh, uh, just to give you an understanding, in short, chaos and turmoil is going to ensue. But his grace is going to abound more and more. And so uh, part of what's happening in Asbury and all these different places, you're seeing the manifestation happen uh, to, in, in essence, to meet and to excel the need of what's happening in the hearts of the people, okay? And, and I'll give it to you like this. Uh, I'd like to ask you if you're ready for that kind of thing. Are you ready? And, and I'm not even saying are you ready for the revival happening in you in such a way to where you're spending, you know, 24-7 in, in a place where God's presence is, but are you ready for the work that is behind of what revival and awakening does? Because I love revival, I love awakening, but I'm telling you, there's a lot of newborns coming. And so that means that we're going to have to be ready for the newborns. It means that a lot of you are going to become parents overnight. Three people. Three people that enjoy parenting. <laughs> it, it means that a lot of you are going to become parents overnight. Okay, what does that mean? It means that there is a raising up of a generation. It's powerful, wonderful to see revival, to see awakening, and to be a part of that. But if you're a father, if you're a mother, you understand the work that is needed right after, okay, or even during. Because I don't know what a billion-soul 
harvest looks like, or maybe two, bil- two billion. I, I don't believe that they're restricting that uh, to one exact billion. Okay, I don't believe that, that as soon as one billion reaches that final zero, click, there's no more salvations. But I believe with all my heart, okay, because, and please, get out of your mind that once that, that one billion soul harvest, click, one billion, that, boom, here comes Jesus, and we're all just out of this place. No. No. It's not looking like that. There's a reason why God is doing this. There's a reason why in the very midst of all of this turmoil and chaos that hearts are being cultivated to seek the reality of who God is. Amen? And so with that, I want to challenge you and I want to encourage you that you yourself need to know the simplicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay, the word says that we all become ministers. It's not only now the, the, the fivefold ministry that, that leads them into a place of repentance or into understanding the gospel, but all of you should know the foundation stones of your faith. Amen? Because we're going to encounter newbies. We're going to encounter newborns. Okay? Baptisms will happen, yes, every day, often. Everywhere. And so with that, somebody's got to teach them the gospel. The simplicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Somebody's going to have to teach them how to live and how to overcome. Somebody's going to have to teach them what it's like to come from an infant stage to the place of adulthood. Some of you still don't have the revelation of coming into a place of adulthood in the spirit. And you, you, you have to allow yourself to grab that revelation because God never intended for you to remain as an infant. Did you hear what I said? Could you imagine that if you had five children and 30 years later they're still infants? Come on, think about that for just a moment. Think about how heavy that is. Do you know how heavy those diapers get when they're older? Okay? And it becomes very messy. But there's a reality to this. In many, many churches, there are infants. And they've been either born again recently or they have been born again for 30 years. And they're still infants. They're still on milk because they've never gotten to the bread. They've never gotten to, they become so comfortable and and enabled. Enabled. And when there's good fathers and good mothers willing to not enable spiritual children and to, to help raise them up, then we're talking about maturity, maturing, maturity. We're talking about raising up adults in the spirit. That was probably one of the biggest aspects of having three daughters is that we loved babies. We still do. You see me holding that little guy right there. I'm practicing, okay? I'm practicing for when our grandbaby comes. And so we love babies. We love spending time with babies. But you know what? I know we got tired of changing diapers, babe, didn't we? I mean, after, after three little ones, you get tired of changing diapers. You get tired of the, you get tired of the, uh, the different aspects. It's like, hey, you got you to gotta know how to walk. You got to learn how to crawl and learn how to walk. And, uh, and then when they learn how to walk and, and crawl, they're like into everything. And then you have to teach them to not be into everything. And then, you know, you continue to raise them up. You don't want them to stay babies. God does not want you to stay as a baby. And you have to ask yourself, do you still have a binky? (laughs) I'm preaching something really good here. You have to ask yourself, after 20, 30 years, do you still have a binky? Are you still saying, Pastor, it's time to change me? 
It's time to change my diaper. God doesn't expect you to stay a child. He feeds us with milk. I'm like way ahead of my message today. He feeds us with milk. He gives us bread. And then he says, come up hither. I have something else to show you. And he says, I have meat for you. Then there's even scripture that says there's, there's bread for you or food that you don't even know about. And then there's even places in the word that says that those giants become your bread. You can't have a giant if you're still on your binky. You can't have your giant, overcome your giant, eat your giant if you're still eating, drinking milk. Hallelujah, so good to be back. So good to be back. Psalm 23, we went through the first couple of scriptures, and uh, um, powerful. Um, this is, this is rhema for the house. This is rhema for this region. It's a rhema word of God. This is this Psalms 91 that we had done for three years, and Psalm 23 now is going to continue to sustain you. Begin to dig it out. Begin to search it out, because it's going to sustain you. For, I don't know, whatever, next year, two years, three years, five years. But you have to know what's in it. Because there are promises in Psalm 23. So I'm not going to read it again for the lack of, uh, lack of time. But I'm just going to jump right into the Lord is my shepherd. I'm just going to give you a couple of snippets as to what we, we talked about here last week or two weeks ago. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd. David, uh, his, his meditation upon the Lord as the great shepherd, God. And so we talked about Isaiah chapter 40, verse 11. And it says that he will feed his flock, gather the lambs with his arm, and gently lead those with young. This is a, this is a great shepherd, uh, the father being the great shepherd, but there is a leading, there is a tender caring that the Lord is going to continue to just kind of gather you in. You'll see that he is gathering others in, drawing them unto himself, and it will be, yes, the offering, the other offering, yes, it's coming. <laughs> Somebody get them baskets out. These people are ready to give. And when they're ready to give, you got to get the baskets out. So go ahead and, and ushers, go ahead and begin to pass those around, please, okay? And so here, just a quick point on, on verse 1. Number 1 is that he is the Lord Shepherd. He is the God that is going to continue to gather the lambs in with his arm and gently lead those with young. You know, that's interesting because gently lead those with young. So that means that there are lambs that have little baby lambs and that there's a gentle leading of those. So here's a picture of what God is going to do with the newborns. It's a picture. It's a picture of what God is going to do with many of those prodigals that you have been praying for is that God is, is, is moving them and bringing them gently, okay? But he's going to give them and put them under a father or a mother, Amen? They need fathers and they need mothers in the faith to help them, to give them the milk of the word. Amen? How many of you know that it's not enough to just give somebody the milk of the word? Like, they got to see your lifestyle. Right. And if your lifestyle isn't matching up with the word that you're giving them, what have you just done? Amen? It's important to understand that. It's important to see that God is doing this thing. God has started this thing down in Asbury, and not just Asbury. There's, there's so many others as to where God is moving. Number two, it says that I shall not want. So Philippians chapter 4, verses 15 through 20, just a couple of points there. My God shall supply all your need, all my needs, your needs, according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So here is a supernatural account. In Ephesians, it talks about how that we have access to every spiritual blessing. Now, I want you to see it like this for just a moment. I want you to see it as a bank account. Your bank account has limitations, doesn't it? Determined by zeros. Right? There are limitations, and some of them have no limitations other than 
Goose egg, zero. Now think about God's account for just a moment. Because he says that we have access to every spiritual blessing. So you are spiritual beings in a human body. And so there is everything that you have need of in him, in the kingdom. And he's going to allow you to have access to that. You have to have the faith to access it. Amen? Remember how we talked about the different facets of the diamond? Okay? It's like you have faith to believe on this facet that you have learned for many years. But then God begins to show you a whole new facet of living, a whole new facet of of reaching in and receiving. And that's something you have to give yourself to. Does that make sense? Okay, so it becomes another dimension of faith or revelation that God is unfolding. So God is going to supply according to his riches and glory. Amen? So number three, he makes me to lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside still waters. So the Lord is going to lead you to pastures of tender grass. Amen? I'll take a look at Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 14, and it says this. It says, I will feed them in good pasture. And their folds shall be on the high mountains of Israel. There they shall lie down in a good fold and feed in rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I'm going to give you one more, Jeremiah 3.15. And it says, And I will, give him, I will give you shepherds according to my heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. And so when you look at point number three, he makes me to lie down in green pastures and leads me beside the still waters. Listen to me. Yeah, I said this, I believe it was two weeks ago, but I want to say it again. Uh, When I was 16, uh, I got saved, 15 years old, I got saved, and I remember being on my bed, and I was looking at the ceiling, and I was pondering, and I was asking the Lord, I says, Lord, there are so many churches out there, so many different aspects of belief. How will I know which one's right, which one's true? And the Lord spoke to me that moment. He said, I'm going to lead you to the right ones. And it speaks to this scripture. And I will give you shepherds according to my heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. And so here God is even in this great awakening, this time of great awakening that God is, is, is shifting people. And there's a hunger that is arising within people that they're hungry for the presence. They're hungry for good shepherds. They're hungry for those that will lead them and teach them according to his heart, according to the heart of the Father. Now listen to me, because you've got to hear this portion too, because many times we think, well, well, that means that, that you know, they should love us, they should, they, should, they should do everything for us, and they should, you know, just take us as we are, and, and all these different kinds of things. Is there truth to that? Yes, there's truth to that. Some. But then it leads right into a place of enabling because what fathers and mothers do, what shepherds, genuine shepherds do, is that yes, they do love, but they don't love according to the way that the world loves. It is not a filial type of love. It means that we love by choice. It means that we love no matter in the condition, whatever the condition the individual is, right? But it also means that, that there is a love, there is a, there, there's a gathering, there is a... There's a compassion, but there's also a correcting. And I believe in the body of Christ, they have strayed away from from bringing correction in the body. Part of it has to do with this woke mentality that's been happening all over the world. But uh, And what it does is that it, it pushes people away from the aspect of understanding authority. I mean, can you see the onslaught of authority just in the general culture? Policemen? politics, uh, just all these different aspects. It's like there is no trust for authority anywhere. And so there is a, a, a great rebellion that's happening against authority. But that does not dismiss the authority of God. It does not dismiss the fivefold structure of God, the government of God that he has established. Amen? And so, but it is something that the enemy would love for you to think and love for you to operate And so God will lead you. If you ask him genuinely, God, send me somewhere, send me to a place that that there will be pastors, leaders, shepherds that will give us good grass, that will give us good food, and will cause growth 
to the body of Christ. Amen? Okay. He leads me beside still waters. And so the thought here, uh, Revelations 7, 17, the great shepherd will lead them to living fountains of waters. Now, there's a metaphor here when it speaks of waters, and, it, and it's used in two, two ways. So the first metaphor of waters speaks of the raging heathen, the chaotic, stormy seas at creation, the vast nations. But also, more significantly, it speaks of life, sustenance, fertility, blessing, and refreshing. So, there is going to be, in this time, even though chaos and turmoil is going to continue, the people of God, the remnant of God, is only going to increase. They're going to increase. They're going to be strengthened. Uh, they're going to be empowered. God is going to lead you to living fountains of waters. What does that mean? It, it means that literally you're going to have fresh revelation. Yeah. You know, the word says that when you receive the words of the prophet, you receive a blessing. And so if you understand that God speaks to the prophets, he speaks to the prophetic leaders, and they begin to release, and if you are, are adhering to it, if you'll hold on to it, you're going to receive the prophet's reward in essence. And so that means that you are guided. You are guided, and there will be continual fountains of living water. That means that when you're reading your word, and you're searching for God to speak to you, that he's going to open something up. He's going to open up his word. He's going to open up revelation to you. I know that uh, Sarah was speaking on revelation, the power of revelation here this past week on the devotionals, is that he's going to open it up to you. And what that becomes is that it becomes a fountain of living water that refreshes you, okay? Just because you receive that revelation doesn't mean that it's yours yet, okay? And what do I mean by that? I mean that you're going to walk through some things, that because you grab that revelation, now you have something to use in the midst of the circumstances that you're walking through. And as you do, now it becomes a part of your life. Okay? The Word of God has to work you over to become a part of who you are. Does that make sense? Okay. Let's go ahead and jump into the last portion of this, and it's going to take me a minute. Okay? So uh, this is the part that I wanted to get to today. This is point number five uh, in verse three. It says that he restores my soul and he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And so I want to uh, just park it right here for today. He restores my soul. So the key here that's needed to understand this is that in order for there to be a restoring, how many of you know that that in order to be restored, that there must have been a, a genuine something that was lost. So there's a restoring that needs to happen. But the restoring doesn't happen without the seeking. I want you to hear that. Because I want you to understand that there are different levels of seekers. There's different levels of seeking God. And you have to ask yourself, what level you're in. Because I believe that if you'll be honest with yourself as to what type of level of seeker you are, I believe that it would propel you into the next place of God that he really desires for you to grow into. Okay? So we're going to take a look at that here for just a moment. But before I do, let's go ahead and bring the, the illustration of the tabernacle, please. So let me go ahead and read Psalm 24, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 6. And it says, The earth is the Lord's and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein, for he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Verse 6, this is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. 
Selah. Selah there means to meditate or ponder on what was just said. So here David, he begins to, to speak, but he begins to ask questions and he begins to answer his own questions. Amen? But this is a powerful portion of Scripture because it says that this is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, which leads me to believe that there were generations that did not seek him, that did not seek his face. Let me say it like this a little bit differently. There are those that seek him, but they don't seek his face. They seek his hand. And so when we're talking about the different aspects of seekers, those that seek, those that pursue, I want to take you to, a, to an illustration there. The tabernacle, the overview of the tabernacle. So there's scripture that says that, of course, that God gave Moses the pattern. Say it with me, the pattern. Testament, but this pattern was in the Old Testament, but also foretold of the New. Okay? This became a picture, it became a pattern as to how God would approach man and how God would expect humanity to approach him. Okay? Just briefly, here the ark was where the very presence of God was. Okay, there was separation, the veil that was separated there, and of course they call this room the holy place. This is the holy of holies, where the presence is, and the outer court, they in essence called the outer court. But if you would take a look at this for just a moment, because this became a, not just a picture, but it became a pattern as to how the people of God, Israel, was to approach God the Father, okay? Of course, we know that they could only approach if they came with a sacrifice. They would bring a spotless lamb, and it, was, it had to do with the remission of sins, atonement, okay? But then even the next place from there was the laver, and this was the place where the priest would go and wash their hands, this particular laver was made out of bronze, but it was made out of the looking glass, glass in essence of the women that was made out of bronze. And so they would shine up that, that, that bronze to where they could, they could see themselves, okay? And once again, it was a picture because this speaks of the Word of God, but it also speaks of water baptism, okay? And so the outer court speaks of, in essence, when we receive Jesus Christ as our what? Savior, our sacrifice, this also speaks to us of the next thing that happens after we're saved. It's called water baptism, a cutting away of the old nature of sin, that we would be dead unto sin and alive unto God in covenant relationship with him, right? Okay, I'm getting somewhere. Once again, this is a pattern. Here, the next place, the holy place, you see the the bread here, the priest had the bread, they had the oil, they had the wine, they also had the golden lampstand here with the oil. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail with that today, but that speaks of the Holy Spirit, the experience of the Holy Spirit. It speaks of diving into the Word of God, communing with God in such a way with the bread. Okay, there's a lot there that I could share. I'm just not going to get all into it today. But then there was also this piece of furniture here, the altar of incense. It had everything to do with the prayers, the prayers of the saints. It had to do with the prayers of the priest, okay? And isn't it interesting, man, I, I, I'm trying to keep this really short because I can really go off when it comes to the tabernacle. Um, there's so much here. What I want you to understand is that we experience the baptism of what? the Holy Spirit. And so we commune with God, not only in the Word, but there's a greater depth of intimacy that begins to happen here. So you could say out here is all man. In this dimension, it's God and man. In this dimension, it's all God. Why is it all God? 
Because in that room, everything was made out of gold. Everything uh, that was made, even the, 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 uh, the Ark of the Covenant, all of that uh, was overlaid with gold. Everything in the room was gold. Gold speaks of the glory. It speaks of divinity. Okay? <sighs> okay. So I said all that to say this. There in that picture is a pattern of three dimensions. It's a pattern of three places that everyone is to experience in God. Okay? All of us are to experience. I, I, without getting into a whole lot of detail, I'm wanting to make you hungry to, to understand this. But everything that we'll ever do, everything that we will ever experience, is all wrapped up in that tabernacle. You will never, ever experience anything outside of that tabernacle, okay? And so it has to do with understanding that, wait a minute, that there's an outer court, there's an inner court, and then there's a holy of holies. Now, here's the beautiful thing is that we experienced all of those things. Jesus was all of that, okay? And I know that some of you are not understanding this, but just go with me, okay? Go with me. Is that Jesus... Was, the, was all of this. He experienced all of this. He is all of this. But then when it gets beyond Jesus, it comes to you and I. And it comes to the corporate entity of the church. So I want you to say corporate entity of the church. Individual. Individual. So the corporate entity of the church is also to experience all three of those dimensions. Which also means that us as individuals are to experience all three dimensions of that pattern. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So without getting into too much detail today, what I'm trying to say today is that many believers remain in the outer court. Many believers have only experienced the outer court. Many believers have only experienced the blood, and some form of baptism, water baptism. And so there are many, many believers, even with what you're experiencing today with the revival at Asbury and different places, there are many of those individuals that were already believers. But many of them are still out here. They've only experienced the cross, the blood, They've only experienced water baptism in some form or fashion, and they've only communed with the word in some form of fashion. Now, you step into the next dimension here. That's if you want to. That's if you want to, because this is where immaturity comes in. And I'm telling you that there is a whole slew of Christianity that feels like it's okay to be in the outer court. And so that would lead us to the same conversation that we had earlier, is that do you really think that that's God's plan for you, to remain a baby in the outer court? If he wanted us, and if he really established this as a pattern, then that means that, that as we experience this, there's more to experience as we move forward. There's more to experience. So the body of Christ, corporately, now I'm talking about the corporate body, will experience all three of these as well. Okay? Let me give you an understanding. Can I, get, can I just touch on this for just a moment? So how many of you are familiar with the restoration that God has been doing in the church for the past 500 years? Have you seen the different things that have been restored just in the past 500 years? How many of you remember the Dark Ages? It was as if the Word of God... <laughs> not, not personally. Yeah, I hope not. <laughs> Glory to God. i got to watch myself. You guys are quick. You guys are sharp. Okay. Um, how many of you know Martin Luther? Not personally, but you know, you know Martin Luther... Um, the restoration, God began this, this restorative movement back to the church. So that meant that the church, after, after the, uh, the apostles and after the, the early church, that things were lost. Things were stripped 
from the church. The church no longer operated in the same giftings. They no longer operated in those things, okay? There was a whole aspect of, of the world coming into the church and the church going into the world. There was a whole mixture there to where God uh, just took his spirit elsewhere. Then God began to speak. And he spoke to Martin Luther, and he said, the just shall live by faith. And it began a movement. It began Lutheran movement. This is where you get your Lutheran church. Was it a genuine move of God? Absolutely. And so after that, you know, I'm not putting them all in succession, but after that, we had the Anabaptist. So here we had, uh, with Martin Luther, you had the understanding that the just shall live by faith, that I don't have to pay an indulgency to, to a, a, a priest so that I can get to heaven somehow. I don't have to pay them anything so that I can get to heaven. It's all by what? Faith in Christ alone. And so the next movement was water baptism, okay? Whether it was 100 years later or 70 years later, 200 years later, you began this, this, this other movement was happening, uh, baptism by immersion. Later on, there was another movement, and I know I'm skipping a lot of things, but there was the, the infilling of the Holy Spirit, okay? And then there was, a, uh, coming more to date, there was the, uh, the aspect of, of even this whole prayer movement that's happening today. This whole prayer movement, intercession, is a movement of God. Do you know where it lines up with the tabernacle? So here, the body of Christ has experienced, in essence, Martin Luther here, the just shall live by faith, faith in Christ alone. They began to experience Anabaptist here, water baptism, okay? And then they began to experience things like Azusa Street, the infilling of the Holy Spirit, Okay, and today, today you have this huge prayer movement. You have this huge uh, intercessor uh, arising type of atmosphere. Well, look, take a look. When I talk about the corporate entity of the church, there's the altar of incense. Okay, so now the corporate church, the corporate church has experienced all of this to date. Do you see what's, what's left? Yeah, yeah. And so as you, as you understand this, as you see this and, and you see the pattern, the pattern, you have to ask yourself, where am I? What do I believe? What have I experienced? So you can look at this another way. We have infants in the outer court. The next dimension, you have youth. But here, this next place that God is bringing the body of Christ, because there is no veil. There is no veil. Christ took away the veil. So we have access into the Holy of Holies. So if each dimension has been experienced, outer court, inner court, and there are individuals that have experienced the Holy of Holies. Now, if the church has lived in the knowledge and experience and expectation and the fullness of the outer court, and if they have lived in the fullness and the expectation of what the inner court means, Why wouldn't we experience the third? So unpack your bags. <laughs> unpack your bags. There's more to experience. And so on a corporate level, on a uh, corporate level, I mean the whole entity of the church globally. God is moving the church into this place. Individually, there have been people, and there are people, that are experiencing that dimension. And they go in, and they come out. It's not, God's, it's not what God desires. Listen to me. Once again, outside here is man. In here, I'm sorry. This out here becomes a, a baby. 
This in here is youth. This in here becomes full maturity. And so when you begin to understand the aspect of the tabernacle, because once again, it's given to us as a pattern, a pattern as to what, how God has opened himself up to humanity and how humanity is to approach him. Does that make sense? And so here is, when we talk about different levels of seekers, okay, you will attain nothing in God if you don't seek him. The word says that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And so you have to ask yourself, just by this little teaching, God, where am I? I'm going to read you something that will help highlight this. Matthew chapter 13, I'm going to read you verses 18 through 23. It speaks of the parable of the sower. The parable of the sower is in the pattern. Okay? And it says, therefore, hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom, so this part of the parable of the sower is now the explanation of, of the parable that he had given. It says, therefore, hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away that uh, what was sown in his heart. This is he who received seed by the wayside. But he who receives the seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Now he who received the seed among the thorns is he who hears the word, and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. But he who receives the seed on good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundred, some sixty, and some thirty. Now, let me say it like this. Everyone is seeking something. They're running after something. So I, I'm talking uh, right now to new believers. I'm talking about believers that have been believers for years. I'm talking about mature believers. You have to ask yourself where you're at. You have to ask yourself, this is what I was trying to say. About, can we bring the, the court back up, please? This outer dimension is also... Uh, symbolized as man. In essence, this is the place where flesh still reigns. That's the place of flesh. Because the old man, if you don't have an understanding of the old man, the old man is still going to rule you, the old nature, okay? And so we need the Holy Spirit, right? And so the next dimension here, this, if this is all man, in this dimension here, it's God and man. But the third dimension, the third room, is all God. All God. And so when you allow yourself to take a look that this is the progression of maturity that God expects from his people. What we are to experience from him. Because there are all level of seekers. All level of seekers. And there is a 30-fold, there is a 60-fold, and there is a 100-fold. And so what God is doing today is that he's releasing revelation, fresh revelation that is leading people into a place to desire to mature. Okay, you didn't hear that. God is leading people into a place to where they're hearing the revelation for them to desire to mature from a child state, from an infant state, to that of a youth, to that of an adult in his, in his kingdom. So you, you do realize that God is not going, there are things that God will not give you to steward as a child. 
there's glory that you won't be able to carry because you're still in an infant stage or maybe even a youth stage. And so God desires for his church to carry the, the, the greatness of his glory. But he's not going to do that with everyone. But he will do it to those who desire to mature. It says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, it says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. I know that I, that I threw this at you and that there's a lot there. But I wanted you to be able to see the pattern. That pattern has everything to do not just with, with Jesus, but it has to do with your individual life. God gave you a pattern as to how you are to experience him. What's available to you to experience? Do not be happy with the outer court. Do not be happy with experiencing the blood. Listen to me. As, as hard as uh, it is to hear this, the blood is not enough. You must experience the blood of the cross and then continue into the baptism, the, the death of the old man. And then you are arisen, a new creation in Christ Jesus. You must experience resurrection power. Amen. Do you know that God never intended for you to receive salvation without giving you the power to overcome? God wouldn't do that. There are so many people that remain in the outer court. They remain with the, the, the dimension of receiving the blood. They remain with an infancy throughout their whole life. And people wonder, why does the devil have so much dominion over them? They're believers. They're Christians. Why is the devil manifesting in them so much? Why is there so much brokenness and, and, and sinfulness and, and all these different kinds of things? And the Lord says, look at the pattern. There's more for you to experience. Much more for you to experience. Let's stand. If you're an outer court believer, go ahead and put that up for me one more time, please. I know you're not going to like this, this phrase, but it's the truth. If you're an outer court believer, you're saved. But there is potential for you to be lost. Okay, I, I, I'm not, I'm not a, a teacher of once saved, always saved. I'm not going to go into that whole thing, but, but if you're going to remain in the outer court without the Holy Spirit, you are given the Holy Spirit to mature. You cannot mature without the Holy Spirit. You cannot mature without the communing with the Holy Spirit, the helper. Why do you think they call him the helper? It says that he will lead us into all truth. So what we have is that we have a lot of Christianity that remains out here in the outer court without any guide, guiding of truth. This is why you have churches that have allowed all these different things in because they're not guided by the Holy Spirit. They're guided by traditions of man. They're outer court. They're not experiencing the Holy Spirit. They're not experiencing the guidance of the Holy Spirit, not listening to it. And so you have a whole segment of society that is not filled with the anointing of God. They remain out here. And you have to ask yourself, am I still in the outer court? 
Or have I, have I become like Jacob? Jacob began to pursue God until he saw God face to face. He got beyond pursuing God. See, let, let, let me give this to you. So people that pursue the hand of God, they're still out here. When they, when they pursue what God can give them, God becomes a, a slot machine for them. God, God, can you do this for me? I've, I've, I've fallen again. Or God, can you do this for me? I'm, I'm a little low on my bills. God, can you do that for me? So this relationship with God the Father is all this asking, all this asking, all this asking. There's no overcoming. And yet God has given us a pattern to experience the power of the Holy Spirit, to experience the communing with the Holy Spirit, to experience the authority of the believer. To where you stop asking so much for things, you begin to believe the promises, and you begin to release decrees, and you begin to take on a whole new dimension as a believer. You begin to mature. But some people are comfortable being children. And when you're comfortable being children, it means that your lifestyle becomes the devil's playground. And you wonder why the enemy wreaks so much havoc or why you haven't grown. I'm giving you this word today to push you into a place of seeking him in a greater dimension. Seeking him in a way that, that presses you. See, the kingdom of God, it says that the violent, what? The violent take it by force. And it's amazing because Jacob experienced the same struggle. It says that 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 he, he wrestled with man, humanity, you're going to wrestle with your humanity. And you're going to wrestle with the principles of God. And because you wrestle with both, you'll see that God will begin to change your name from that of deceiver to that of a son, a prince with God. And so you know, we all go through this, this place to where we're wrestling with our humanity. But we're also wrestling with the principles of God, the Word of God, standing upon the Word of God. And then we become this mature being that God is, is bringing forth. And then the promises begin to unfold in such a way. I'm saying this so that you could seek Him harder, seek Him greater, seek Him in a greater way that you have ever, ever sought Him before. If you're a baby, my prayer to you is that, for you, is that you really get tired of being a baby. Because I'm not going to give you a binky. And we'll all experience this from time to time. We'll see that God has called you into a higher place. God has called you. There's, such, there's going to be such great need. There's need now, but there's going to be such greater need with this billion soul harvest. It's already coming into the church. And they don't need your immaturity. They'll see it and they'll run back out of the church. They need the reality of God in you, the holiness of God, the righteousness of God. Amen. Because this third dimension where the church is headed, if the corporate church has already experienced the first two dimensions, then you will see the church function in that third dimension. And if you don't experience it, it's only because you didn't want to. It's where God is calling his church. And I want to go there. And I'm going to do whatever it takes to go there. So, Father, we thank you that even as these go home today, 
that, Father, that they would see the truth of revelation, that they would see, God, that you are calling up higher, you're calling them up into a place, Lord God. You're saying, come up hither, I have something else to show you. Can we just open up the altars for that? Can we do that for just a, a moment? I just want to open up the altars for that. That's just a, a, a place of faith. That if you just want to step into the next dimension with the Lord God, that we just stand together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a, a sovereign moment because what a day like today in the word that you hear, it becomes revelation that you can either dismiss, you can allow it to, to be planted on stony ground, or you can allow the seed of this, this teaching to be cast aside. And what the enemy does is that he comes and he begins to pluck the seed away from you, whether it's by the care of the world whether it's by the things that are happening or your reputation. And then that seed just gets removed and then maturity doesn't happen. God has called this house and he's called this people to carry a glory that they cannot carry on their own strength. They cannot carry on their own ability. They cannot carry with the old glory. And so, Father, you see your hungry people, these that seek you. This is that generation that, God, they won't seek your hand, they'll seek your face. God, you're moving them from a place of, of childhood into a place of youth, into a place of complete maturity. Because, God, you've called your people to experience you in the fullness of who you are. In whatever stage you're at, just allow yourself to, to lift that before the Lord and say, Lord, this is where I'm at. This is what I have experienced. And God, I know there's more. Father, I know there's more. And I'm willing to lay down every part of this, every part of who I am, so that you would take me into the next dimension, that you would take me into a greater place of maturing, that I would go from 30 to 60-fold, that I would go from 60 to 100-fold, that, God, that I would not remain an infant, that I would not remain a child, but, God, that I would be that strength in the earth, I would be that son, that I would be that daughter in the earth that is able to carry your glory because of the maturity that you have brought me through. And so God, I repent. I even repent from remaining as a, an infant. I repent from thinking that it was okay to just be a youth. God, I want everything that you have for me. Help me to mature. Help me to grow. Help me to become what you have called me to become. Father, you're raising up sons, sons and daughters in the earth. 
those that desire you, those that desire your face, they desire your intimacy. Father, take us beyond self-satisfaction. Take us beyond just being satisfied for a moment. Take us beyond our humanity, even our limitations. God, help me to grow up. Help me to mature. Caught up in your presence, and I just want to sit here at your feet. You're caught up in this holy moment, you never want. just want to hear and nothing else and nothing else nothing else will do I just want to hear and nothing else and nothing else Nothing else will do. I just want to live. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else will do. Caught up in your presence. Cause I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave Yes, Jesus Hallelujah Oh, I'm not here for blessing Jesus, you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do. I just want to live. Hallelujah. There are times that what we do in worship what we do in song, what we do in teachings. I believe that God has designed it in such a way that it it does. It pushes people beyond their humanity. It pushes people beyond their limitations. The reason why it does that is because it presses them into a place of maturing and experiencing God in a whole new dimension, a whole new way. I had a dream a long time ago as, as the Lord was revealing the pattern to me, I had a dream. And it was a dream of three doors. And I said, Lord, I knew it was the Lord that was showing me the three doors. And I said, Lord, he was asking me, he says, choose a door. 
And I said, Lord, I don't know which one to choose. Which one should I choose? I, I don't know which one. There was a hesitation to choose anything because I didn't know which one to choose. And he said, it's okay. Don't worry, because I'm going to open all three of them to you. And that's not just for me, that's for you. God will release revelation. It's up to you. He will open the door. The, the revelation is the opening of the door. It's up to you to step in. And he's not just going to open up the outer court to you and just leave you there. He'll open up revelation of the inner court and then the most holy of holies. And you have but to walk in and to accept. And so, Father, I just release that over this body. I release that over this people. That, Father, that it would cause such a hunger and such a stir on the inside of them. That, Lord God, that they would be hungry, hungry to run, hungry to pursue you. And, Father, at all cost, at all cost, to receive you in the fullness of your glory. Father, you are calling them into a higher place. You're saying, come up hither. I have some things to show you. And so, Father, I release that over this body and over this people. Those that are hungry and those that have an ear to hear may receive your revelation and your blessing in the mighty name of Jesus. And we all said, amen, amen and amen and amen. Give the Lord a big hand, church. Mm. Church, if any of you uh, need uh, just a prayer of salvation, we have ministers that are going to be standing over here. If you need prayer for something else in particular, please, we have ministers that are going to be right over here to my left. Church, we love you. God bless you. May you have a wonderful day.